Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a fun project with you. We are going to make watercolor palettes out of resin. And uh, this project took me a little longer than I expected, but I think I will be able to help you not take so long and do it perfectly the first time. Uh, I think this came out really cute. I was thinking the smaller palette would be great for like squirting out watercolor or gouache in, and this bigger one would be good for mixing. Or you could even squirt into the corners and, you know, pull out the color for mixing that way. These actually are not palette molds. These are tic-tac-toe molds. So um, if you get these molds from Let's Resin, I'll show you here because I have the molds, they have uh, X's and O's that you can also mold out of the resin so that you can make little tic-tac-toe games. So I thought that was kind of cute. That'd be a really fun little gift to make for a kid or of course you could do what I did and make some palettes for your painting friends. Um, so Let's Resin has a lot of really interesting molds. I like the resin because it does not smell. Um, I used the uh, the starter kit, the epoxy starter kit. You just mix equal parts, a part A and part B to make your resin. Then you can add colorants or glitter or whatever you want. Um, but they do have other types of resin depending on what, what you're doing. If you are looking to do jewelry, you can do uh, like the UV resin, which cures very quickly because you just need a light. This does take some time. And um, I have a lot of tips and tricks I can share with you. This video isn't sponsored. I'm just making this uh, for fun uh, and I hope you enjoy. So without further ado, let's go to the table and I'll show you how I did it. I wanted to use my sister's favorite colors on this because it's a gift for her and she likes teals and purples and I found a chameleon powder that will shift between both of those colors. And this kit from Let's Resin actually has a brush in with it and I'm using that to apply the powder directly onto my silicone mold that's also from Let's Resin. Now these are tic-tac-toe game molds but I thought they would be perfect for watercolor or gouache palettes so that's why I'm using it. Now a tip with these powders, I would say don't grab too much powder because um, you want just enough to coat the surface and no more. You don't need that extra powder there. So I ended up getting too much out and then having to spread it around. Now, if you don't uh, wanna spend the money on chameleon powders, you can actually go to the Dollar Tree or Family Dollar. They have this product called um, like Powdered Eyeshadow by LA Colors and it is basically uh, powdered mica. It doesn't shift, it's not the interference color, but it still will look really pretty and pearly in, an, uh, in a project like this if you wanted to, you know, you know, just get one color and save some money. But these are pretty affordable, so I enjoy them. I also also make handmade watercolors with these powders, so I think they're pretty versatile and a little goes a long way. So I was a little bit wiser doing the smaller one and just taking out the amount of powder that I absolutely needed for the project. Less is more, friends. Try to just apply the powder to the border so you get a nice uh, white or clear mixing area in the centers. And if you do accidentally get a little powder onto the mixing areas, just take a Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol on it and you can wipe it off. Now we're going to mix up our resin. We're going to use epoxy resin for this and I'm using epoxy resin as opposed to the UV resin I used in other projects because you can go a little bit thicker with your cast. Now with this resin the instructions say you want equal parts of part A and part B and this measuring cup actually has measuring uh, marks on the side and so what you can't see in this uh, the way I'm filming overhead is I actually have my head down low and I'm looking at eye level at the marks to make sure I have exactly the right amount and I think I did um, 1.5 mls of or, or ounces rather of part A and the same of part B but um, I just basically wanted enough to coat the first like, to do like about half the mold I should say and then I'm putting in the part B very very accurately and this is really important because if you have too much of one part or the other that's when you can end up with a uh, like a flexible cure or a sticky cure and that's not what you want so um, just be as accurate as you absolutely can and this is by volume and not by weight okay so you definitely just want to use the measuring cup that comes with the kit until you're a little bit more experienced I always recommend going with the kit now this kit comes with that little mixing electronic mixer thing too so it was great it was so easy to mix them. It does create air bubbles I found um, but it doesn't really show up too much when you're doing like a glittering surface like this. I just used some like kind of iridescent purple glitter that I had on hand. Nothing fancy, nothing special for resin and it worked great. Just make sure you mix it up really well and I'm using a popsicle stick for this um, because I didn't want to make more air bubbles. So once you've got that good and mixed up you can scrape the excess back on. Oh I'm working on a silicone mat as well because um, resin can get pretty messy but on silicone it will all peel right off and you can save any little drip drops that 
um, happen on your mat and use them for a card making projects like I did in my last card making video. So I'm very carefully pouring this in over the, um, the kind of border area. I want to make sure I cover all of that. And um, if I don't get it on top of the clear areas, the part that will end up being like the mixing areas, that's fine. I thought that it would be both pretty with the glitter or without, but I did want to have the glitter underneath the uh, chameleon powder because I figured if some of it comes out kind of translucent, it would look really nice. So that's what I decided to do there. And as you can see, I had uh, plenty to fill up these borders and that was really the goal. I wanted to make sure I mixed up enough that that I could do my project, but I didn't want to have any go to waste. And with that kind of clear glitter, like I said, it would look pretty even if it was under the um, the mixing areas, because I do intend to do some white uh, resin after that. Um, but some glitter would look pretty too. So that's that's kind of how I figured it. I try to I try to plan out my project so I'm not going to waste a bunch of material. After filling the smaller tray, I saw that I had enough to coat over the mixing areas and still had some left, so I'm using my popsicle stick tool there to scrape out all the leftover um, glitter that I have here, and I'm gonna use a silicone brush just to spread it evenly over the rest of my, um, my larger palette too, so I have a little of that pretty iridescent glitter underneath where I'm gonna have the white epoxy later on. I let that first layer cure on a heated mat overnight. I didn't leave it heated overnight, but I did put it on a heated mat for probably about an hour or so, and then I just let it cure overnight before going in with this second layer. So here again, I did the parts A and B in equal amounts and mixed it up. And then after it was fully mixed, I added in some white alcohol ink that is designed for epoxy resin. And this is also from Let's Resin. And I'm just making sure it's mixed. Now this is white, but it's also, I feel like it has a little bit of translucency to it. So if you wanted to add some glitter into this, it still would show up a bit. So you could do that as well if you want. Just make sure you get that all really well mixed up so that um, when you pour it, it should be pretty even. And let me tell you, take some time to level your work surface because I had some areas where my epoxy just slid so it made my glitter uneven on the back. Can't really tell if you're looking at it right side up, but you definitely can see that on the back side. Now I have to admit, I'm not really sure how to clean those paddles. I think you're supposed to wipe them off once you use them, but it came with two, so I figured you just let it dry on there and, and then like switch your paddles out when you're gonna mix something else. So no, probably just wipe them off in between projects, but you do get two in case, uh, you know, I don't know, in case you were switching to another color right away, I guess. So this little tray is just going to need the second pour and that's gonna be it. Now, if you see my face going in there, it's cause I'm breathing onto it to pop any air bubbles. And I can also, I'm also using a straw here to blow air onto it to help spread the resin around, but mostly just to pop any of those air bubbles. And that mixer does make a lot of air bubbles. So maybe I'm using it wrong. I'm not sure, but I definitely do get a lot of air bubbles. It could be that I'm supposed to let it sit and settle more before I pour it um, but you're not going to see any of the air bubbles from the front side with this but I just want to men make a mention of that uh, because I have a feeling maybe you're supposed to just let it sit for a bit but your breath will pop most of the bubbles or I think you can use like a torch or a lighter but um, I had a straw so that's what I decided to, to do now if you do get the um, if you do get some resin on the edge you can just use a tool to scrape it. <laughs> you can see I have yesterday's resin stuck to the other end of that tool. I'm a mess, what can I say? But the, the project came out cute, so I'm totally happy with that. And we're gonna do the same thing for the big tray. The big tray will require one more additional pour after uh, I cure this layer. I probably could have just mixed up more resin and um, and done that all at once in the same layer, but um, I was kind of nervous about it not curing, and so I just kind of put this lighter layer on, tipped my board around to let it cover all the, um, coat the whole board, and then I put it on the mat again to cure, and I let it sit overnight. I forgot to mention that I did sprinkle some glitter into the wet resin before I let it cure in the previous step. Um, now that's the next day, it's all dry. I mixed up some more resin and alcohol ink and I'm just pouring over that final coat basically to level up the area that uh, where I had set it to cure, it wasn't level. I needed to, you know, level that up. And I'm gonna spread that out with a palette knife. Just make sure anytime you use any uh, non-disposable tool with your resin, you wipe it off um, before you store it. Because once it dries, 
and if it's not a silicone tool, it is going to be permanently coated with resin. So, uh, but I thought the palette knife worked really good for this. It didn't um, interfere with my resin at all. And uh, it was great for just kind of spreading that around a bit because I didn't have that much space left in the mold. And if I had had a level surface, um, I wouldn't have had to add any more to it. It would have been fine. But this is just correcting my non-leveling surface mistake I made in the previous step. And uh, we're going to put that on the mat again, let it cure overnight. And in the next clip, you're going to see how it turned out. Now we're going to unmold these guys and see what we have. Oh, this is cute. This little palette looks great. I'm just going to see if any of that mica... Oh, great. None of that chameleon powder is coming off onto my hands. That'll be great for putting out paint, I think, for a session like some gouache or whatnot. I do. Have, I did have a few little air bubbles in there, but I still think it's gonna work good as a palette. Now let's look at this big one. This was this was two pours. I did the pour with like the clear glitter after I brushed on the mica powder, and then I just did like a white and glitter. It was clear mixed with white alkali and can glitter. I did get some bubbles on the back. I'm not sure why, but anyway, we've got that. Now let's unmold this big one, which I did in three pours, which I was very worried about because my surface wasn't, oh my gosh, it's sitting level. Oh, thank goodness. I was so worried about this because it was like, oh, look at that. It's nice and level. Oh, good, good, good. At least as far as, yeah, look at that. Okay, good enough. I don't know why all my glitter like slid, probably because my surface wasn't level. So when I did the second pour, it was like everything was sliding one way and then I did the other pour and I turned it around. But hey, it's sitting good. This will be a nice mixing area. I think it's cute. I don't know what my sister's gonna think, but that's I'm intending it for a little a gift. We'll see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this project. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.